Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Tune RC Easy Pilot all-in-one board. I would call this a 3-in-1 board, flight controller, ESC, and OSD. OSDs used to be a separate piece that we had to wire up like a lot of our components. Now we've, it's commonly on the board. So maybe maybe just a 2-in-1 if you don't include that. Uh, but what's different about this board, what they tout, and I'd hope to have a build done by now, but unfortunately I haven't gotten around to that, is a thicker board with uh, more copper as well as larger solder pads. So this would be something that you, you probably won't find in a bind and fly. We might in the future, but for right now this would be for those people who are going to build something that's 1S to 2S, maybe you want to uh, uh, build something like a Mobula 7 HD0, or you have another sort of micro quad that you want to build like a uh, Rocket Race. It's still my favorite, by the way. So this one will require that you add a uh, VTX, a video transmitter, as well as a receiver. Thankfully, we have really small components that we can add to these. Uh, let's take a quick closer look, but before we do that, uh, I should mention the price and the fact that you can only seem to get it from their website, tunerc.com, uh, and the price is $55, of course. You know, all of our components have gotten more expensive, so what do you think about a two-in-one board, maybe a three-in-one board, if you count like I do? It's $55, technically $55.99. Where's that price point at? Let me know down in the comment section. So this is the box that comes in. And these are the items that you get with it. We get a short battery lead, as well as uh, the grommets that we need to put in there for a vibration dampening on this little board. A little look at the layout. I think most of us would consider this the top, right? With the USB, even though on the other side, is where we find the silk screen and the labels for everything. Uh, let me get a different board out here. I wanted to show you the size of these solder pads and kind of line things up a touch. Uh, let's go uh, over here. Give you some sense of idea of the solder pads for especially the motors. Most of the solder pads are about the same size. So it does offer solder pads, and especially when it comes to the motor wires, they're nice and spaced out. It does get quite a bit tighter, and you have a little bit less to solder to uh, in the center here where we have all of our different wiring uh, for the uh, different components that we're going to need to include onto this board. This pad right over here is our 3.3 volt, then we have our ground, 5 volt, our X2, TX2, and then this is S-Bus. Uh, of course, we have our motors all the way around, M1, motor 1, motor 2, motor 3, motor 4. Rotate around over this way. TX1 and RX1. We have our video out as well as our video in. So V out is video out. So that would go from the flight controller or this pad out to your video transmitter. And this would be from your camera into this pad. We've also got the 5 volt, and then we've got another 5 volt, and another ground, and another ground. And then, last but not least, is our power lead that goes in over here. And something that's interesting is they've got these two additional little locations that we can use. Uh, like if you were going to build something like the, the Mobula 7 HD0, that you could uh, use those little tiny wire pads to go to the power lead without having to go directly to your battery wires might uh, make it a little bit more tidy or easy for you. Uh, let's weigh it up and compare it to a typical all-in-one board. It weighs four and a half grams, and we're gonna compare it to this Happy Model Crazy Bee board. Now this is a more traditional all-in-one board that has, uh, I don't, I think this one's missing its antenna, right, for the video transmitter, but it still has the RX. So this would be a true all-in-one board or a five-in-one board, but let's see what the weight is. So it's 4.13 grams. In my calipers, I am getting 1.16 millimeters thick. And compare it to that all-in-one from Happy Model, which is just 0.9 millimeters thick. So that's about all there is to really show, kind of a quick tour around the board. We take a little spec and measurement of it. And I'm curious, because this board has been out a while, have any of you used it and have you found it to be very durable? Because one of the questions I had in my mind is, well, there's two really two things I thought of when it came to this board. One, sometimes people want to build and they want to build in more traditional fashion, but they still want to build a micro. So they don't want to have all their components right on the board. Uh, that way, if say your receiver dies or your video transmitter dies, you can replace those parts individually versus, you know, a true all in one. Pretty much if something on it dies, you know, it goes in the trash. There, There is repairs you can do to these things if you have the knowledge and the skill set. But for the most part, I think most people 
once something dies on them, they throw them away. Whereas this doesn't have as many components, but there would be a weight penalty, of course, that you would be paying. But because it is thicker, it has uh, more copper that's used within the board. I'm wondering if this board tends to last a little bit longer than the boards that you've found. So if you have used one and you've had a good experience or a bad experience, I would be very curious to know as far as how its longevity has been. Uh, let me know. Uh, leave that down in the comment section. Uh, if you are interested in visiting the Tune RC website and taking a look at this board, I will have it linked down in the video description as well. If you do have any other comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.